really glad that you're here. Uh, this is about traveling well less. And I have been doing this for probably a long time, but definitely in the last four years since I started traveling full time. But I think house sitting and pet sitting is an amazing way to really travel well for less, whether it's for a weekend or a week or you want to a month for a setup. There are all sorts of options and I get a lot of questions, concerns and worries and how do you get started? So this is one of a four part series on how to get started house sitting. And today we're gonna to talk specifically about where do you find house sits and how do you get started in setting up your profile? So I'm really glad you're here. And I'd like to welcome everybody who's joined us. So I'm wondering, put in, in the chat, you have been house sitting, you've done pet sitting, you want to, or you're like, mm, not sure that's for me. So put it in the chat and we'll, we'll have a little conversation about it. I don't know about you, but I do not have millions in the bank that supports my need to travel. I don't live with regrets. I can't retire with more money now. I'm trying to make my social security and my retirement funds go as far as possible. And house sitting definitely allows me to do that. So if I'm doing it, I know you can too. So I'm glad you're here to find out about it. Why house sitting? One, one of the most expensive things when you travel is accommodations, hotels, Airbnbs. I know some people stay in hostels. I'll be honest with you. Some of the hostels are lovely. Some of them are not. I did that early in my travel career and I have just chosen not to. So the house and the pet sitting is my route to accommodations and it worked really well for me. And I stay in some amazing houses I'll tell you about later. One of the things that I tell people about house sitting and pet sitting, 99% of them will come with pets. <laughs> And they can come from the typical domesticated cat and dog to farm animals and snakes and fish. But you can you can filter out if you only want to sit for cats or you only want to sit for dogs or you love being in a rural environment with farm animals and chickens. So you can find your niche in this house and pet sitting land. There are house sits that don't have animals. And I've done a couple of those for a long time where a owner of a home has gone away for eight weeks and they don't want to leave the place empty. We've all heard the disasters about hot water heaters boiling over and irrigation systems flooding. So they want somebody to keep an eye on the house and depending on where they live, they want somebody coming and going. On a, I finally find the, usually find those through referrals, not on a house sitting platform, which I'll talk, to, talk about in the middle, in a minute. So the deal with the house and the pet sitting. Two ways I think that you should think about this. You decide where you want to go and look for a house sit in the area, or you find a house sit, and then you decide that's where you're going on vacation or to live for a couple months. There are two ways to use the house sitting, either to help you plan where you're going or to be adventurous and decide that you wanna try someplace new. We're gonna to talk um, today about where you find the house sits and setting up your profile because that can take two to four weeks. That's the starting point. On October 6th, we're gonna talk about how to find the best house sits, how to filter and look and review and interview and apply. And then in part three, we'll talk about preparing yourself for the house sit and questions to ask and make sure there are some details that you get. And then during and after the house sit to make sure that you're asked back if you really liked it. If you are looking to house sit, one of the things that we have are many, many online platforms. There are a number of them that you can use. Of these, Trusted House Sitters is probably, if you're familiar, one that you have heard about, THS, Trusted House Sitters, one of the biggest. It's based in the UK. I just find that some gaps. It doesn't always cover the entire world. Trust My Pet Sitter is new, also based in the UK, but they're like a matching service, a concierge service. So you put your name in, they've interviewed. It's a, a stronger verification and interview process because there's no database for me to look through. They find sits and then call me and say, we think this is something you would like to do. And they liked your profile. So it's sort of like a matching service. They have called me a number of times and I've already been booked. So I'm anxious to, to do some with them when I have some time. House Carers, Aussie and Kiwi House Sitters. So then there are country-based house sitting services. You can use whatever you want. And I sort of went to the Aussie and the New Zealand. For those of you who know me, I, I like to spend time there. And I wasn't finding a lot of sits. I, I found a couple, but I wanted to find more. And in all of these, you can set up notifications. So you can decide, I want to go to Paris for Christmas. And you put in the dates, dogs and cats you want, and then it'll send you notifications. So you don't have to keep going to the app over and over and again, looking for it. 
We'll talk about that in part two, though. And then Mind My Home and Mind My House also have sort of Mind My Home Australia. They all have a cost. Um, I would say the trusted house is probably the highest. But for me, these little ones that don't cost that much are worth having in my back pocket um, if I'm having a challenge. So Trusted House Sitters is one of um, is one of the big ones we use. And you need to set up, you need to join. You can go to Trusted House Sitters now and you can look around. You won't be able to book anything. You won't be able to search. You have to join these things in order to use them. So... This is my profile on Trusted House Sitters. So what we're going to talk about today is how you set that up. This is the beginning of Trusted House Sitters. Kiwi House Sitters only in New Zealand, which is really helpful. If you want to spend a month or two in New Zealand, I find this really useful because they're focusing on New Zealand. And you might find Trusted House Sitters a little bit light, sort of the farther you go away from the United States, UK, and Europe. Australia Mind My Home. And again, you know, you're buying to get in and then you have the searchability and they set up your, your profile. So let me just go back to the profile. This, this can take some time. If you want to go away next week, that's not going to work. I would say that setting up a house sitting schedule, I start in February when I know that I'm going to come back to a place, whether it's the United States or go back to Australia or I want to go to Europe or Canada. I start setting up searches and interviews and sending in applications as you can see, it's got a picture in it and you've added, you've added pictures so they get to know you. The thing about the online platforms is that your email gets verified. So does the host email, your phone is verified, your ID is verified. You have to have external references. Even if you haven't house sat before, it's sort of a character reference. And all of this takes time and there's a criminal background check. That's why I said, you can't do this tomorrow. You start the process now so that you could be ready by Christmas. There's an advantage to using these online platforms. You're selling yourself. One of the hot tips on this one is short, sweet, and to the point. Think of yourself as a host looking for somebody to house sit, and you have eight applications, and you have to read through all of these. You want to read through all of the reviews you had. People sent reviews in for me. You want to see what I've said. You want to see the animal, what I've taken care of cats and dogs and cows and chickens. For every applicant they get, a homeowner or a host is really going to look very care carefully because you are going to be staying in their most expensive asset, their home, taking care of their furry family. This is no joke. But you want to keep it short and sweet and lively so that when these hosts are reviewing your application and your profile, they get what they need quickly, snappy. I would say that some of us here might be over 50 or 55. If you're, if you're over 55, just say yes or something. Um, I have heard the horror stories of hosts who have millennials work from home people who have decided to house sit and travel while they work. And when the host or homeowner got home, the place was a mess. This young person didn't understand to follow the directions, walking a dog, cleaning cat litter, making sure food didn't stay out, you know, or dishes didn't stay out. We have an advantage. You have an absolutely amazing profile and it, it, your age will put you at the top of the list because somebody who has some responsibility, who may have had a home at some point in time or a condo they're taking care of, maybe they've even had pets. In this day and age where this work home, the digital are out there living in a different lifestyle than we did when we worked. It's, it's created some challenges for the homeowners. They share with me all of their disaster stories. They know when they get me or they get you, they're getting somebody who's responsible and knows what they're talking about. Your profile is important, but your age and your experience is highly valued. So it's a little easier than you may think it, it is. So that, and this is why a lot of people are using the online platforms where they verify everything so that there's some sense of security. There's also insurance at a high level of membership. So trusted house that gives me insurance in case somebody cancels at the last minute and will cover a hotel for me. Um, if I have a vet emergency, they have a support line and an ability to help me with a vet if it's something I need a vet for. Some support you can also get from these platforms while you're sitting or in between a sit or if you have a question. So the advantage to these is, is for me, kind of high on the list. And I recommend you go this way because the other half of it is actually doing it through Facebook. 
And if you looked at Facebook, this is House Sitting Europe. You will find these host a sitter, house sitting Europe. Just type in house sitting or pet sitting into Facebook and you will find a multitude of groups that is good and bad. If you start lurking and watching, you will find that there is good, bad, and ugly. You're living in Washington, DC, and you got invited to a sit from a woman in Paris to watch her cat. And she lives in a beautiful area of Paris. Maybe she shared some photographs and maybe you decide to take it offline to direct message each other and you get some pictures. And a week before the sit, she cancels the whole thing. And you have already bought your tickets. Maybe you left another house sit. You have no backup. Maybe if you're in Paris already and you'd like to find an extra week to stay for free and you could meet them at a cafe for some croissant, that might be a good way to use these Facebook groups. But I would not use them to plan on going overseas or maybe even in the United States. There's, there's nothing but their profile to tell you whether they're legit, whether the photographs are legit, whether their stories about their animals are legit. So you could find yourself in a pretty wacky situation. So I highly recommend you go with the online platforms. Facebook groups are free, online platforms are not. That's my, that's my two cents on how you can look for a sit and how you set up your profiles. You just wanna gather your photographs. If you've taken care of any pets prior to becoming a house sitter, if you had your own pets, travel that you've done, and even your life experience you know, that shows that you have responsibility. And next time in October 6th, we'll, we'll talk about what you put in your application and how you set up an interview process and keep track of all of them. I only do sits for a minimum of three or four weeks. And I only do the short ones in between those long ones if I want, or it's a holiday weekend or something, and I don't want to spend high rates on a hotel. The majority of mine are three or four weeks. It says I have 22 sits in my, you know, experience, but they're long sits. And I've been doing it for a long time on other platforms before I got to trusted house sitters. Like I said, it'll take two to four weeks to probably get your whole profile set up, join, get references set up and let them verify you. And then you're ready to go. Those are some tips that I have in terms of getting started. There is the interview process we'll talk about next time and questions you can ask and red flags. And later on in the series, we'll talk about what happened during the sit and what if something goes wrong. I'm nervous about a pet sitting, a pet getting sick under my watch. So I would love to hear your experience about that. I'm pretty lucky. I have a lot of dog experience. We rescued Sharpay for about 20 years. And if there's a dog that has a problem, it's a Sharpay, which is why they're in rescue. So illness doesn't really bother me. On trusted house sitters and other platforms, the host is required to put together a welcome guide and it tells their contact information um, and who the vet is, who their follow up is. I had, um, um, a lab, 14, 15 years old, um, you know, they, during the interview, they asked if his end of life happened while I was sitting for them, would I be okay? And, you know, I said, yes. And I'm kind of a, a humanitarian in that. I don't believe that animals should suffer because that's, that's what we're here for because they can't make that decision or they're just, they're sent, they're giving us vibes. Right. And we know they had a whole plan. So if it happened while I was there, which it did not, I was to call their daughter who did not live far away. The vet would come to the house. They had a whole plan in place. And when you get into aging animals, you, you need to ask that question. Actually here in California, I showed up um, just to go through the house because our transition time was short. She had a dog and a cat. And the first thing she says when we walk in, she said, I'll be putting Fredo down before you get here, like the next day. And I said, are you okay? She said, yes. She rescues senior dogs out of shelters. So she knows their lifespan there, right? And she was fine. And she's, I'll start stalking the ASPCA and find another one when I get back from my travels. I think, Teresa, people really know how their animals are and what to do. People are very, very, very clear about their animal behaviors walking. Like you have to cross the street if they're an aggressive dog or, you know, they aren't friendly with dogs, you aren't going to the dog park and we're not taking them off leash. So people are pretty clear about that. I really, I really haven't had that issue and it's, it's worked out really well. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much. And I've been doing this for a long time. This is asking, it's hard to get chosen for the first time when you don't have reviews from other clients. I think that depends. I still would like to say our age trumps a lack of experience because they think that we know and we'll figure stuff out. I would say no, references do mean a lot. 
So finding the right people to give you references on your character, on your work experience, how you've interacted with people. In October, we'll talk about the application and what you put in the application. Your age is going to put you at the top of the list and then your application. And then they go to the, your profile to see if they want to interview you. So it's a numbers game. I started in February. Um, I don't even know. I think it's 15 sits I have between June and December in Southern California, Palm Springs and Las Vegas. And three of them have asked me to come back from last year. And the one in Palm Springs in June has asked me to come back and I'll be going back there in October. You know that sales thing? It takes 10 calls to make one sale. This is setting up a search and then deciding who you want to apply to. As I said, um, we'll be doing this uh, uh, for four weeks. This guide is now going to be available to you. And all you need to do is sign up. So I'm going to put that in there. You use that link. And then um, you'll automatically get a download of the um, document for today, for part one. This basically shows you um, all of the links that I was showing you. It will talk you through how to put your profile together. It'll talk about how you're um, deciding which platform to use. So this is the part one guide. And then we'll do part two on October 6th. I've decided to put this all together so I can share it with more people. Feel free to email me. You can also sign up for October 6th, um, which is the next one. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming and sharing and learning and, and finding out about this wonderful way to travel well less. If you're not paying for those hotel rooms, imagine how long you could stay somewhere or how far you could go. Beth said, you recommend people get started in their local area. That's a really good question. Yes, Beth. In fact, that's how I got started. When I came back from Australia, I stayed with friends in Las Vegas, had a little casita. And we're dear friends and it was fine. I was coming back from a job in Australia and I didn't have a job back in the United States. And I thought, you know what? Let me see if I can find some jobs in Las Vegas. And that way I'm, I'm less underfoot with my friends. Let me just figure this out. Oh my gosh. I landed a beautiful, beautiful home, two cats. She ended up being traveling a lot. So I was going back and forth between my friend's house and hers. And she'd go away with her partner for two weeks at a time. And then she knew she could trust me. And it just, it went really, really well. So yes, absolutely. Or maybe you do a 50 mile radius around your current home. You know, it depends on how, where you live and how far out you have to go and try and try for a weekend. You'll find weekend sits, you'll find week sits, you'll find three weeks sits, you'll find two months sits. So I think that's a great question. Absolutely. Starting off local and maybe short to see how you like it. Um, and as I said, on October 6th, I'll give you how to apply and how to search and how to ask the right questions so you don't find yourself in a, in a questionable situation. I did once. I'll tell you about that next time. Um, but I survived. You know, we all survive. Any other questions? questions. Michelle, uh, what are your thoughts on beginning a sit, staying overnight before? Okay. So this is totally up to the host. If they're leaving at three o'clock in the morning, they want you there the night before. And that is a question. So some hosts are new, some are not, but I always verify the dates because they may say October 25th to November 10th. I said, are those the days you're leaving or the days you're returning? And what time would that be? So Michelle, you can ask or they can offer. And the really experienced hosts, depending on when they're leaving, will know to include the night before and they'll have a guest room. The ones that only have like one bedroom apartments or condos, not so much, but they will have arranged their time to leave at like four or five in the afternoon. So you can go over at 10 or 11, 12, two o'clock. So those are questions, Michelle, you have with folks. If they don't want you there the night before, but you want to get there, then it's on you in the hotel room. Or you can ask. October 6th, I will make sure that I have the accounting of how many days I sat and how many days I had to find accommodations. I also have dear friends in Vegas and Palm Springs and San Diego who are always opening their home to me, but I don't want to overstay that welcome. If you have one night out of four or five weeks that you're somewhere or one night out of seven, that's better than eight nights in a hotel room. Hope that helps, Michelle. Have a wonderful week ahead, and I will look forward to seeing you on October 